All right. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Sorry for being a little bit late. I had to make a couple of adjustments here. Hope everybody can see me and hear me okay. I don't think anyone has tuned in yet, but that's okay. If people join us later, then you're in for a treat. I am adjusting to make sure you can see what I'm painting here. Okay. That should be good. Well, welcome. I am Catherine Cox from Dolphin Healing Arts and Nature. And welcome to um, Internet Self-Care Day. I thought it would be good to do a healing arts uh, nature painting session, kind of Bob Ross inspired. I haven't made any new work in about six months or so, so just felt inspired to do something. And um, yeah, I've got my paint here. Um, I did a little card reading to help prepare us for the session. So if you want to look over here, I've got a panther, a phoenix, a hyena, a fire ants, and a fox. Um, these animals, this particular reading, um, I had asked what messages would help re uh, help heal a past life regression therapy session that I did recently and help with uh, certain relationship advice. It was, it was all tied in. And the basic thing that the me main message that I got from all of these is that um, I'm going through a huge transformation and um, the fire is essential for that. There's a lot of fire cards in that reading, and it's necessary for you to change and to transmute into something new and improved. And um, you have to be willing to let go in order to attract healthy relationships, healthy connections, and that includes the one with yourself. And when you have a good relationship with yourself, then you can um have better relationships with other people so um and then for our plant today um this i cut from my avocado tree um interesting avocado trees don't typically grow well in the pacific northwest uh, we don't really have the right climate for it but because of the recent you know heat waves that we've been having i think that my avocado tree was really starting to take off and do well um, it's, the tree is also very significant to, uh, a connection with a person that's been on my mind recently. And, um, I chose to cut off that, um, extra piece that was growing cause it had split off into two, but, and that does happen sometimes, but sometimes you have to cut that off in order for the tree to grow better. And sometimes it's for the best. You have to let go in order to grow. So in honor of what's going on there, I'm going to be having this on display. And well, let's go ahead and start painting. Let's go ahead and start doing that. I'm going to be taking my one and a half inch brush. If you have your supplies, feel free to go ahead and follow along. Go ahead and get that a little bit wet. And you can use a napkin if you need to, or, you know, make sure that you have a, an apron on to help protect your nice clothes. You don't want to get any stains or anything. And I'm going to start out with this light hue candy in yellow. I'm going to go ahead and put some on my palette here. I can get the lid off. Um, this particular painting, I had initially said that this was going to be good for younger audiences, but um, I had a past life regression therapy session recently that, um, well, I'm going to be talking about some adult content in here. 
<clears throat> and I didn't think that it might be appropriate for younger children. So viewer discretion is advised. I'm also going to add some medium hue candium yellow. It's a slightly darker yellow. And um, I'm going to be doing some, some mixing here. I can get that lid on. <laughs> Well, that's really challenging. Okay, there we go. Takes a minute. And you know what? I want to add some red. This is Candium Deep Hue Red. Anyway, this past life regression therapy session was very, it was interesting. And I put the link in the description if you're interested in learning more about it. Uh, Rick Ranham in Tenino did, uh, he hypnotized me and um, we went through this session together and it was very, very fascinating. I wasn't sure what to think at first. All right, so we have our yellow and our red. And we're gonna be kind of mixing that, getting a nice color here. It's kind of a nice orange. And we're just gonna come right in and just jump in. Um, he took me through several exercises where, um, you know, I started out when I was like 15, when I was five, and then it went back all the way to the pioneer days, which was really fascinating. And um, I don't know if any of you have ever been hypnotized before. Oh, my friend. Okay, I'm just gonna set them off to the side. It's okay, that happens. Um, but yeah, being hypnotized, it's kind of like a state of being awake and asleep at the same time. You're like somewhere in between. And so the first thing I noticed was that I tasted copper in my mouth. It tasted, I tasted, um, like pennies and I had this image, um, of, you know, eating pennies and, or I should say, biting on them to make sure that they're right. And in my past life, I was a man, I was a man, which was fascinating, named Wyatt. And Wyatt had a wife and two children, but he also had a mistress, which was very naughty, as you know. Naughty Wyatt, and um, he was being dishonest with them. He was not being honest about his intentions, and he was being selfish. He wasn't thinking about how his actions were affecting other people, and he knew that what he was doing was wrong, but it didn't stop him because he was getting what he wanted. Being, being a rascal. And in the regression, he asked me to tell me about something bad or like a traumatic event that happened. And in my hypnosis state, I saw that there was a fire in the town. And when he had a choice to choose either his mistress or his family, he chose to save his family. And he let the young girl go that he was having the affair with and he felt so awful about it um, it haunted him for many years and he became an alcoholic because of it started drinking really heavily he wasn't being a good parent he wasn't being a good partner 
And when his uh, wife confronted him about his behavior, he beat her up. And, um, and he felt so horrible about what he did to his wife that he ended up getting a shotgun and going into the woods and he shot himself. He killed himself. And um, yeah, so that was a really sad past life. My goodness. But it gave, and I got a chance to, um, you know, forgive the people that, you know, did those bad things and that past life, that energy that has been with me for a long time. And I had went into the session with the desire to try and understand why I have a hard time attracting healthy relationships because I just can't seem to can't seem to make it work. <laughs> but it turned out and I've had partners, you know, be unfaithful to me and be dishonest with me and I uh, definitely gone through a lot in the in the dating world recently it's not easy it's tough out there especially during this time but um this regression helped me understand that in a past life i was actually a man that was mistreating women and um, it was something in like a energy in me that needed to be healed something that had happened a long time ago. I know that probably sounds really crazy, but it actually gave me a lot of really good information and a lot of good insight. All right, we have a nice sky here. So what I'm painting, if you're curious to know, um, the very last thing that this man saw before he drink himself into oblivion and then took his own life was this beautiful sunset and um add some more yellow and make it a little brighter in the, in the middle this was the last thing that he saw and the thing about being hypnotized too is you are aware of everything that's going on and you know you he doesn't make you do anything that you don't want to do but at the same time you know it's like you're watching a disturbing movie and um, the images that you see and the things that you experience they stay with you for a while as if you have if they had just happened to you so that's pretty interesting um but yeah this sunset um i just keep seeing it in my mind and replaying that final moment when he decided that he didn't want to be here on earth anymore and the pain that he was feeling and it was really relevant to me because um you know, I've struggled with suicidal thoughts for most of my life. I, um, I suffer, I have major depression very badly and I do struggle with thoughts of wanting to not be here anymore. I'm going to go ahead and drag this down. I have, a, have an idea of what I'm going to do here. But what I learned from that regression um, is that, you know, once you are gone, you're gone. That's it. You cease to exist. And, you know, the thing about being alive is that, uh, I mean, yeah, you'll go through some rough patches, but you get to learn from your mistakes and you get to grow and you get to learn about how to make things better. <clears throat> and then recently within the same week <clears throat> very very recently um 
I had gotten news from this particular person that's been on my mind that um, he, had, he had shared some information with me implying that he and his ex and her family had been, they'd all been spending time together. And even though this person and I were just friends, um, it, and we had dated before too, and it did not go well. It was, we were not compatible or we were not a good match. And we were kind of trying to, I guess, see if we could still be friends. Um, when he told me that, at, oh, by the way, I added some burnt umber. It's a dark brown color. I'm doing something kind of naughty. I'm mixing acrylic with oil. You're not really supposed to do that, but I don't have any dark colors, so I'm just making do with what I have. And we're just going to come on in here. I felt really sad. Um, I was grateful that he was honest with me, but I also felt sad that he was um, spending time with this ex and her family. And, and I didn't understand why it was bothering me quite so much because I was like, you know, he and I are not together. He's a free man. Why is this bothering me? You know, and I went to the top of the hill that um, he and I had shared a special moment and we had kissed once. And um, I went to the top of that hill and I sat in the place where we sat and I just, I cried and I cried, cried very hard. And then I, looked up and I just started screaming and I screamed very loud. <laughs> so if you're on top of Tumwater Hill and you heard someone screaming yesterday, that was me and I'm really sorry. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not in any danger. I just needed to get my feelings out. And almost immediately after I was done screaming and crying and um, once I started walking back down the hill, I remembered the story of Wyatt and the two women from my past life regression. And I thought about what I learned. And then I realized, you know what? This is, you know, this is a valuable lesson that I'm learning right now. Normally, in situations like that, I would just get really depressed and I would take it really personally. And it leads to downward spirals <clears throat> that are difficult to come out of. But in this moment, I was like, okay, you know, this, uh, this wasn't meant to be. And I know that. And I'm not going to hold on to it. I'm having to get quite a bit more here. And you know what? This, I think because that brush got so wet, we're going to go ahead and get another brush, one and a half inch brush. It's dry and we're just going to dip it straight into the oil, the burnt umber. And we're just going to come right in here. Keep working with this. There we go. That's right. Oil and water do not mix. But anyway, um, and I, because I had had that past life regression and I learned from that, I realized, you know, I don't have to hold on to that pain. I can let that go. It's for the best. I knew that we weren't compatible. You can love and care for someone very deeply, but know in your heart that you're not a good fit for each other. And it can be really hard to let that go, even if it's for the best. Sometimes it's necessary in order to 
spare any more pain. So I wrote him, and then we're going to come along here. I know this looks crazy, but I'm just going to be adding some little markers here. You'll see why later. Just kind of have fun with it. Don't be attached to how this is going to come out here. In the image, I kind of saw the sun setting between these two trees, and it was kind of like an open area. This is kind of just like a marker for me. Okay. in there. All right. Um, and so I got to write that person and I told them, um, I want you to know no matter how long we go without talking um, or what happens in this crazy life, I don't regret meeting you at all. And I'm grateful for what our friendship and what our reconnection has taught me. And then I was able to let that go with love and not let it continue to have a negative hold on me. And that was really powerful. It was really valuable. All right, so I'm going to take some, we're going to do some color mixing here because I don't have any green. So I'm going to take some red. And let's see. I'm going to take some yellow. I know yellow and blue make green, but I want it to have a red tint to it because of what's going on with the sky here. You'll see very soon. I have a little faith. If you add red to it. It also adds a brown accent. So that'll be fun. Okay. And I'm going to take ultramarine blue right over here. Just mix all that in. I'm going to take my fan brush. Yeah, we'll take the fan brush. And we're going to just start mixing. Yeah, there we go. Now it's turning into a nice green color. Okay. It's a nice deep green. Perfect. Okay. And we're going to come in here and we're just going to start putting in our trees. Look on there, there. Kind of planning it out. So you know, I was thinking, I wonder if people would be interested in Internet Self-Care Day, uh, you know, just because it's almost the end of summer. People probably want to be outside. Um, I recently hurt my back at work, and so I've been spending a lot of time inside. And it's been a little boring. It's it's hard when you hurt yourself and you can't do the things that you love. It can really hinder your joy. But um, I've gotten back into my art again recently, and I, you know. 
I've kind of forgotten. Like, oh yeah, I have ways of entertaining myself. When you don't have things to do, that's when more negative thoughts can creep in as well. It's important that you find things to keep you busy, find productive things to do. Because you're too important. We we can't lose you. Can't lose you. Hurting yourself is not not an option. Well, it is, but it's not a good one. There would be people that would be devastated if you left. Painting is a great way to get lost in doing something that you love and make something beautiful when you're going through something really painful. And just know that you're not alone. Taking your own life is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. You don't want that. Okay. Go ahead and uh, go. This guy is hard to do. It's just a baby. Just a little baby. Hopefully you can see it, okay? The other thing that I learned too from that, um, both the regression and this recent encounter with my friend, is that the reason why I had that reaction is because I, I care deeply for him. It's okay to let yourself care about people. Even if they don't care about you back, it's okay to care. It's, it's always good to let yourself love. And love is expressed differently by different people. Everyone has different love languages. Maybe his way of caring is by being honest with me. That seems to be hard for a lot of people to do, but it's always good to be honest. <clears throat> When you let go of that unhealthy love, or the parts of it, I should say, that aren't healthy, you make room for new growth and you make room for healthy love to come in. All right, I'm going to be adding some bushels here. Can't just have plain, plain earth plain ground, gotta add some stuff down here too. Maybe there's some bushes. No bushes right there. So I'm gonna add some on this side too. Oh, looks like there's a dirt road. It's out here.
couple more times back here to give that feeling of being enclosed, I think. When I talked about that, I'm gonna bring it around actually. Get out of the room with being enclosed. Thread to the ground here too. I want there to have a feeling of like fire in the sky or something. Kind of dark feel to it. I think it got a little dark right here. I want to bring those trees back out. It got too dark.
There can be moments in life when it does feel too dark, though, you know? There can be moments when you just feel like there's no way out. But remember that that's not true. There is always a way out. You're not stuck. Hey, we love you. We're glad you're here. You know what? I want to add a little bit of yellow to help brighten up this area because it did it did get too dark. It got darker than what I had intended. Well, that's okay. When you make mistakes or you realize that you made a choice that you're not happy with, you can always make a new one. That's the other thing that's important to remember about being alive. Once you cease to exist, you don't get the chance to fix any of your mistakes. You don't get to go back and make things right. It's just it. It's just gone. I don't want that. Trees that are closer make them a little brighter. Then just add little highlights. Our, our bushes need some highlight too. They need some highlight. Okay, we're still here. Don't forget about us. Another great tool that you um you know, I want to dedicate this to anyone that is suffering from depression or is having thoughts of wanting to hurt themselves. Just remember, you know, there's always hope. There's always a path out, no matter how dark it gets. There's always a way out. And also, this is something that my therapist gave me. It's a little rubber band. If you're having thoughts of wanting to hurt yourself. Just snap yourself out of it. It's a little harm reduction method. Loving yourself more. People that love themselves don't want to hurt themselves. It's important that you keep working on that. Okay. I'm going to take a little break from the trees. I, this also got a little too red, so I want to brighten that up just a little bit more with this medium hue. Let me brighten it up a little bit. Added some more yellow. Yellow and the red, mix it up. And then we'll just come on in here. Fix that. Smooth that out. Making new choices, fixing what we can. But yeah, this is the image I saw in my head. This was the last thing that Wyatt saw. I think I'm going to call this painting The Last Sunset. And I'm going to 
put that memory to rest so I can move forward. And when I find that special someone that I meant to be with, I'm going to treasure them and be grateful for what I've found because it's been a long road trying to find that. And I say goodbye to old patterns and situations that no longer serve me. I want even more yellow. More yellow, more yellow. And make it a little bit brighter. Normally you want to start light and then you get darker, but um, that's okay. It's not about the, pro the final product, it's about the process. It's not about making it look good, it's about making choices that you feel good about. Even just a little tiny bit of hope can radiate out. There always comes a moment to what I'm painting where I feel like maybe I ruined it. <laughs> but no, I didn't. Because I'm still working on it. I'm going to expand this out. I think about all of the fire cards that I drew in the card reading too, and they're all about fire and transformation and, you know, that light is the only thing that can drive out the dark. You have to be willing to take risks and take chances and believe in that light in order for it to work its magic in your life. Starts little and then it gets bigger and bigger. I think it was in the Hunger Games when they said that hope is the only thing that's stronger than fear. I'm always surprised too when I'm doing an, an art session with people and they, they're so afraid to even start painting because they just think that they're so bad. But I tell them, like, it's not about, it's not about whether or not you're a good artist. It's about expressing your feelings. It's about getting it out. And then, you know what? I'm going to come around here, and I'm just going to come around here. It almost looks like there's fire in the trees. Well, it's certainly fitting for wildfire season. <laughs> Gotta be careful. Only you can prevent wildfires. Smoky to bear. Okay. 
cool. Much happier with that sky. Much, much happier with that. That's good. I feel I'm going to add a little bit. Okay. Oh, let me get that fan brush back out here. I, you know what, I'm not trying to pick favorites, but if I'm being completely honest, I'm being totally honest, this fan brush is my favorite. I love the fan brush. It's just so fun. <laughs> I feel my inner Bob, inner Bob Ross working through my veins whenever I use it. I'm going to bring back some of these trees back to light. Lighten the trees up just a little more. Because they're like, no, more too dark. Don't worry, I'm bringing you back out. Bringing you out of the dark. Give them another really light front to match so he's not the only one that stands out. I'm going to be alone. So that that way it's lighter and then it gets darker on the outside. That's more the vibe I was going for. There we go. Yay. Trying to help you out, Wyatt. Trying to help your soul get out of here. Don't want to say stuck in sadness. May the things that happened in your life be valuable life lessons in mind. Not that I'm a cheater or anything. I never have cheated on anyone ever, and I never will. Because it's rude, it's not nice, hurts people's feelings, makes people feel bad. But, uh, yeah. A lot of people are cheaters. That's what I don't like it. It's not nice. Mention here. Okay. I'm 
think we're getting close to the end here. Getting very close. One final stab at the yellow. I'm going to add just a little bit more sun right here. Just a little bit more sun. All right. Well, I feel good about that. I'm going to bring it a little closer to you so you can see our final product. Oh, I wish my camera was better. I'll take a picture and um, I'll put it on there for the final so you can see what it looks like. I feel good about that. However, we need to sign our name. That's very important. Can't forget that. I'm gonna sign it in yellow down at the bottom corner here. Go ahead and get a really skinny brush and use a light color. And do your signature. All right. So my uh, signature here, it's a K with a wave and a little dolphin. I've changed, I go by Catherine, Katie, dolphin, so many different names and it's hard to choose one. So I'm just kind of combining them now. That is our final product. Well, thank you so much for joining. I hope that you um, enjoyed this experience and I hope that I shared some interesting words of wisdom to help you and um, or at least maybe I made you laugh a little bit. Um, yeah, if you in, if you would like to um, like and subscribe and leave a comment down below, you can actually um, have a chance to win a free signed copy of this art experience. And um, I hope that you will share it with others and have a wonderful day. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.